How's everything everything been going, Isle? Pretty damn good, man. How about yourself? Cannot complain. Cannot complain. It's been a uh, really wonderful day. With all these new changes and our new guests, it's gonna have some great information. So oh, can't wait to pick his brain. Pick away. Can't wait. <laughs> So, uh, the Palmas, what do you think of all these, uh, these new changes to the, to the patch rounds? We've got, you know, automated, uh, changes to what the defaults are loading up. We've got the, you know, the new, the new defaults for, uh, gimbals being off and look ahead mode being on. Any thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's, it's nice not to have to go through that pre-flight every time you spawn into the game or whatever, you know, right, so right. Um, it's easier for new players to, you know, get a grasp on what they're doing instead of being confused on, oh my God, what, I, what button is what, or how do I turn this on and off? And, you know, you're not sitting there scrolling through your commands for five minutes trying to figure <laughs> out how to turn G safe on or off, you know? Right. Yeah, I think for the new players especially. Do you ever do any uh, automated things like using voice attack to kind of go through your full list of uh, pre-flight offensive toggle voice ons attack, and offs voice attack is very useful um but when you're in team speak like when you're flying with your friends it's really a, it's kind of a annoying to use unless you're using push to talk but using push to talk actually is hard to do when you're flying so you know like but when you're when you're by yourself and you know yeah team like voice attack is really useful because you can you know do things like you can time your 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 missiles a lot better with a voice attack you know just that extra millisecond or two of timing it makes a difference oh yeah definitely i, I tend to find that i only use it right at the beginning of combat like i'll load up my profile like at the right after respawning and then i and after that i try to do everything manually manual input it's also good to be able to um, to say eject and still be able to maneuver for that last few amount of seconds, you know, while get your ship in a, in a flight path to where you eject and you're still getting shot at, but you're not, you know, going to die as soon as you hit the eject button. Yeah, I find it especially yeah, right. useful for like on the fly sh uh, shield configurations or locking, um, you know, three missiles, you just tell it to lock three missiles and uh, it does. Or uh, you can take hey, give them. Uh oh, sorry. Apologize for the interruption. Hey, Godric, is the music over? Yeah, your music's been over for a while, did you not? Okay, I, yeah, I'm sorry, you I'm sorry about that, man. I wasn't sure either, so I just jumped right on in. <laughs> okay, that's perfectly fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Station 42. Uh, I'm your infamous host, Vedra Malik, and with me today is Ion Traz, the uh, leader of the Ready Player One Star Citizen group. We also Hello. have the uh, technical lead, Godric. Um, Godric makes the show possible for us, and today's show is brought to you in part by the Ready Player One group. Uh, just go to Facebook and search for Star Citizen, and today's show is also brought to you in part by Louis Shipwash and Detailing. Did that last bounty bless your ship's cabin with its lingering stink? Or maybe that floating vandal you hit in space just for fun left a bigger mark on your ship than you expected it would? Bring it down to Louis Shipwash and Detailing, and we'll make sure those ugly spots never grace your presence again. Louis Shipwash and Detailing, now with a new location on Terra 3. All right, so today's show, we're going to go ahead and get this ball started. Um, so the current events today is that ships can be shot up into pieces and parts, and we have our special guest with us here today, Mr. Defamas, uh, one of the leaders in the Rennie Commander Board. I think that he's pretty good at shooting up ships into parts. Uh, are you, Defamas? Depends on what weapon load out, but sure, yeah, I'm pretty good at it. Um, depends yeah. on what I'm shooting at, honestly. Um, Hornet's easier than Avengers and Gladius is, but, you know. Now, I understand that this is supposed to be a puzzle piece. It basically just breaks uh, ships into half and, and cuts them up. And so that's, uh, that's bound to be an interesting mechanic later on down the road. Ion, do you have any input on that? Um, yeah, you know, uh, well, when we kind of hit it, we hit it on the point earlier, we were talking about some of the changes that they've done to 1.3. Um, 
in, at the very beginning. So I, I kind of don't want to fill in with that. I was a little bit distracted. And I was going for some more information and I was checking out the whole star map winning its award. So I don't know. Have, uh, have you heard anything about the, that, Defanos? Do you uh, utilize this fancy new uh, tool set that they've given us? Or are you a strictly a fighter pilot? Well, no, I do like the exploration and intel gathering process of any game. Like EVE Online, I was a covert ops pilot pretty much the entire time. So when I look at this map, um, the first thing I did was try to analyze um, which ways in the Vandal space would be the easiest and to see what kind of ships we can get in there without having to make multiple jumps. And I found that right. the, the Caliban system is perfect for getting into Vandal space and... Um, getting a strong foothold and the, attacking them. So if anyone out there's, you know, thinking about joining those, I think Operation Pitchfork guys. Right, right. Um, yeah, I imagine they're doing pretty good analysis there. I hadn't actually looked at it from that perspective. That's pretty good. Have you? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming then that you're looking at uh, the appropriate size jump gates for your organization or whatever they're trying to do. Are you guys looking at bringing on big, you know, larger assets in to support your fleet? Or are you going to do like small scale, like fighter jumps? Well. We haven't really planned out that far yet, but um, considering the way we fly, um, we're probably going to do more um, fighter, you know, just getting in there with a, with a small fighter or two, maybe right. 10. <laughs> um, going to capture yourself a sight? We have, we have larger ambitions, but she, yeah, sight's on the list. Nice. All right, moving right along here. Uh, basically... Another little piece of news in the current events is that 2.0 is actually uh, is looming very, very, very soon. So, um, any input on that? Oh, what, what are you looking forward to? Oh, I can't wait to, to get in my cutlass and actually be able to utilize it properly. Because you know, you know, an arena commander, you, you know, it's great to fly around. It, it's fun, but um, without the crew, it's it's really hard to to do. Because obviously, the ship is designed to, you know. Someone's supposed to be flying it while someone else is shooting it, you know. Yeah. So it's just, you know, I can't wait to actually play around with, you know, freelancers and all the other bigger ships like Constellations, Retaliators. And, right. You know, see what those missile mechanics are like, you know, see what that combat's like. Because, you know, my biggest thing with the 1.3 patch right now is, um, is quote unquote weapon balance. Um, they've made certain um, weapons harder to uh, line your pips up with, for example, so that that, um, that pip lag there. So one of the big things is we're trying to find loadouts to where we can, you know, stay accurate without having a, a huge spread. Um, and we've noticed that some of the size 3 weapons, like the Mantises, for example, have a huge spread. And those weapons are, quite frankly, intended to be used on bigger ships. Like, yeah. So I, I do see that design, but um, there still needs to be some tweaks to where you can still use it against a Hornet, for example, and not overheat your Mantises in two seconds. I mean, come on, that's, right. that's a little that, absurd. That makes, that makes sense because they've, they've, they've you know extended the range on the hard ammo type weapons and with the mantis it's rapid fire so now it's long range but if it's got a spread so its cone is really wide at that long range it basically becomes pretty useless unless you're fighting against a larger ship exactly so, hey ion i heard you had some uh, useful information for us useful information why yeah. never <laughs> well actually i i had a couple of questions about theory crafting if we want to drive into that um well i well the, the information I had set aside earlier was the, our uh, discussion about like the defaults for gimbals and uh, being set to auto on and look ahead mode being auto on, or I'm sorry, gimbals are auto off and uh, look ahead mode being auto on. Um, definitely very relevant. I think that's more pertinent for new players because it helps out a lot. Those of us who've been playing around for a while, it, it might be a mild convenience, but uh, you know, there's a lot of automated features you can use to do that. So, but I like it. I think it's I think it's the right direction. They need to continue to drill down on uh, on the tech as far as like you know, um, hot key bindings. How we how we save those profiles. I mean, I'm looking forward to when they move forward into letting us have loadout loadout profiles that we can save for specific ships or even oh, multiple absolutely. loadouts per ship. I've That's going to be that. amazing. I've been wanting that for months. You have no yeah. idea. Like, oh. Even even when I, I still say that the most important feature they've ad ever added to the game so far has been the ability to export your your key map profile. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Um, how about you, Vadran? Any other uh, info that you can pay on top of that? 
Well, basically, it's the uh, it's the look ahead mode is is on, and so it turns off the gimbling in some loadouts. And <laughs> for for an avid keyboard and mouse fan, I'm I'm really really, you know, feeling the pain on that one. I was like, what the heck is going on? And and oh, honestly, that makes it's, sense. Yeah, it's the uh, I believe it's the Alt M key. I right. believe that's what it is. No, uh, somebody act, cr- it's um left control G is the new command for gimbals turning on or off. Yeah, that turns the gimbals on and off. To get yourself out of look-ahead mode is, I want to say it's Alt M or Control M, and that's that's what it is. Is that basically oh. you're you're stuck looking in one position and you can't move the gimbals any. One of the uh, issues I've had with this recent patch, as far as uh, you know, changes to the bindings and things like that, is they have, I have my push to talk set to right control, and I have that bound to my profile for my warthog. So normally, when I push down on my button to to push to talk while flying, it's all fine. But they've added in some kind of new control that whenever I push down control, now I can look around the cockpit in free look style, but it locks my pitch and yaw, so I can't push to talk and fly at the same time. <laughs> and then when you go into the view settings, it is not right control is not mapped to anything in the view settings. So like, I'm like, I'm totally boned for a little while while they fix that. All right, moving right along. Uh, today's lore highlight is the Orbital Supermax story inside of the Star Citizen main website. I would have be willing to highlight somebody else's story if they're willing to go and, and post it up. Uh, just feel, feel free to send us some of those uh, interesting links to some of those good stories. Orbital Supermax is one of my favorite stories. Uh, Defamos, do you have any kind of lore or stories that you're interested in in, in terms of the Star Citizen universe? I mean, I'm not really big into the lore. I mean, there, there are some of them that catch my attention, like when the Vandal attacked Vega system or whatever. Like, I yeah. read that one. That one caught my attention. But, you know, the other ones really don't really... I mean, it's meh. kind of hit or miss for a lot of people, I think. <laughs> Even if you even if you love lore, sometimes it's hard to pick it up and and squeeze it in because we're so used to just wanting more information on ships and and you know what's coming down the production pipeline. <laughs> All right, so that was the lore highlight. Um, Ion, do you want to get that theory crafter question? I imagine you're going to have a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> Possibly. So uh, so to Favos. Uh. thinking ahead into the future like we're all we're all fancy and fancy pants with our spaceships and whatnot but what do you think about personal personal weapons and i don't mean the light arms kind of person on person but what about like anti-ship personnel weapons like man portable you know rocket launchers or bazookas rpgs and that nature you think that'll go into game okay so yeah like the one thing i want to say about that is that chris roberts did say that he wanted like an armor three you know, kind of kind feel. of experience, right? So in Armor Three, I don't know how much you guys play of that, but they do have things in there called you know explosive satchels and IEDs and all this you know great demolition stuff. I mean, I mean, sure, nice. rocket launchers, RPGs, and all that stuff. Yeah, sure, that needs to be in the game at some point. But I don't think a guy with you know wearing medium or light armor should be able to carry one. I think that you have to be wearing heavy armor to be able to carry heavy weapons. I mean, that, that's that's just how I feel about it. That that would put quote unquote balance into shipboarding, but that's looking like super ahead into the future. But yeah, when you when you're boarding ships and you're trying to take over an Idris and you see the base full of the gladiuses or Avengers or Hornets or whatever, and the pilots are still on the ship, then yeah, you want to blow those up. You don't want the pilots to get access to their ships. That you know, denial or in denial of the hmm. enemy is you know priority one for any kind of invasion you see realize. when i when i envision this it's basically that a, a group of people have flown by in a redeemer and they eviate out and so they're now stuck on the ship's hull like of an idris or a bengal and they're trying to punch through and when they're punching through they're having people harass them and in, inside of the smaller craft and so having an anti have an anti-ship weapon like a, a missile or even just a uh, rocket launcher might actually be the difference in be, and how much you know people might be lost lives might be lost how many uh injuries right. might be sustained no the, let me let, let me ask you this now, how annoying would it be for a bunch of a-holes to jump out of their ship with rocket launchers and you not be able to target them in your ship because they're eva and well, they just sit there and light you up with missiles and blade i don't, well, I don't think that would be though, a pretty they... good experience for the player that that would actually it's still a counterable experience though because the chaff and the flare would still deter deflective missile. I'm talking about like a portable stalker system or a portable uh, track force missile. Like a where, stinger or something. 
Yeah, it just it basically goes out and it's one maybe you know that that heavy class that you're talking about might only have be able to hold like two of them, uh, two two or three shots at most. But beyond that, he really after that he's only got three. After his three, he's done, and by then, hopefully, everybody's into the ship, and they're actually traversing their way into the corridors and, and the rest of the area, doing the rest of the boarding operation. Uh, anything but, you want to okay, add? Yeah, like, yeah, like a, a ship being able to say, okay, a missile's coming at me. You don't know from where, but the missile's definitely coming at me, and you just hit your countermeasures and evade it. Sure, I guess that would work, but like if a player was like in your face like trying to you know kill you in the ship or trying to find out where the guys are EVAing then the element of surprise would work there because you your missile would be fast enough to hit the target without the pilot having the chance to you know react to a missile being shot at them at that close all right well i mean so yeah I... That, that if you put yourself in harm's way like that that could definitely be pretty crazy yeah. i i think i think depending on how strong missiles are and i mean if you have one person can carry one single sun one single shot i mean yeah you'll have some interesting edge cases where the mechanic gets abused but it is kind of a sandbox and it would definitely add another level of uh threat you'd have to take into account when doing like boarding operations or or assault on a on a base but I, I like the satchel idea better because that way the, the mediums can carry it. You know, and plus satchel. I mean, every man needs yeah. a satchel. That's C4 charge. Uh, that's what I think of when I think of satchel. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and go forward with the interview. And so I'm going to go ahead and take that first question. What's your favorite offensive maneuver, Defamos? Uh, lock two missiles. And, um, well, like I said, it depends like uh, on how the – how the encounter goes, like if the pilot's coming right at me, then of course he's going to see my missiles. So you're going to have to circle strafe dogfight, like slug it out. Like, so what the, the idea is even on squad battle and battle royale, I know this might sound greasy and cheesy, but you really want to try to kill someone that's not looking at you, not paying attention. You want to sneak up on someone and just blap them. Well, in, in combat, you know, that is a fair tactic. I mean, the idea that you're going to have two knights jousting on equal terms is very rare very rarely actually occurs in, in a PvP environment. So, right. I mean, why, why would you maintain that level of thinking when you're, when you're scrambling to, you know, you know, protect your own assets and de decimate your enemies? Yep. All right, so next question, Ion, you want it? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, let's carry on with the same theme. Like, uh, rather than offensive, when, you're, when, you're, when you find yourself in the gun sites, what do you think about, what do you default to for your, like, I guess, favorite defensive maneuver? Okay, so when someone's gunning at me, the first thing I look at is what they're flying, and then the pilot who's flying it, you know, because I have a pretty good grasp on, you know, the regulars in Arena Commander. I mean, there's there are good pilots, and then there are people you're just like, hey, I don't know this guy, so he might be new or a casual. So it, if someone's coming at me and I know they're good, for example, let's say Obscure Hero, because he's a really good pilot, um, the first thing I'm, I would do is just, you know, not really take him head on, but I would at least start trying to put shots on him before he got into, you know, range of me. Um, <sighs> let me see if I can put this in words. So <laughs> when, when, a, when a smaller ship engages you, they have an ability to out, you know, to outmaneuver you when they're close. Like if, when I'm flying my Hornet most of the time, I can't bring my nose up quick enough to track the smaller ship. So what I try to do is I try to have, I kind of have to trick that pilot and that's the hard part. Right. So you can either do it in a couple of ways. You can either use it, you can either um, stop strafing and boost straight at them and then kind of flip at them to see if you can get the inverted shot or you can hit cap locks and go into decoupled mode and start strafing backwards. Um, but so then, what do you, a quick interjection there. So this new, the new flight model has absolutely face wrecked the whole kicking it into rear reverse. I mean, you've got, you've got ships that take 12 seconds to go from full speed to zero and that's before you even get to a negative, a negative integer. So, I mean, has that impacted you as a, oh, an, as an aside? We're talking about boost. If that's, if that's what you're referring to, then yes, absolutely. Well, well because... even even boost won't won't reduce that twelve seconds to something that's manageable. I mean, unless you know six seconds to get to zero and then unless go into you're reverse. Flying, unless you're flying a smaller ship like a Gladius or an Avenger, for example, because they have the, yeah. a ridiculous amount of boost. Um, 
like the Hornet, for example, only has like, like I think it's seven or eight seconds of boost. Okay. Now the Gladius and the Avenger have anywhere from 15 to 18 seconds of boost. I forget the exact number because I don't stop watch it. I just count when I'm holding the boost button down to see how long right. it lasts. So, um, when you're dealing with that kind of a disadvantage, it makes it really, really hard for Hornet pilots to compensate for that because when you're get, when you're an adult, when you when you're fighting in a Hornet, you're you're committed. You're in that fight. There is no escape. You're gonna have to kill that guy, or he's gonna kill you most of the time, considering the odds. So what hmm. you do is you have to, tr like I said, outsmart and trick pilots. Now, right. And that, and that comes down to flight maneuvers, like you were saying. So the new flight model, for example, um, if you, when you go turret mode, which is what I call decoupled mode strafing, if you have, and this goes into controller schemes. So um, depending on what you use is going to depend on how maneuverable you are. So if you're a keyboard and mouse pilot, um, decoupled mode, it, it can work for you if you have that kind of perception. But, you know, in your brain, like, you know, okay, so I'm, I'm moving back, forward, left, and right with my AWS and D, but you're, you're going to run out of boost quick because you're constantly boosting to, to change your flight trajectory because, right. of, because of the way the drift is in the game. So the way to beat that, unfortunately, is to start using joysticks. Like me, I, for example, I use two joysticks, you know, right being a Logitech 3D Pro, my left being a Cyborg version 1 Mad Cats. And Ooh, nice. That'll, so, that'll make for some fun questions. So, basically, I have my left stick set up to where when I pull up, I strafe up. When I go, to, when I pull it forward, you know, like classic flight maneuvers, it goes down. So, go up, go down. And then for left and right, it's strafe left and right. And then I boost accordingly with the with the buttons on the uh, the joystick. Instead of the the triggers being fire and weapons, it's my space right. break is my trigger. The boost buttons on on the stick itself is like my ring finger, so I have inst I can stop instantly. Like it's it's so, so it's fast. So no, with that with that kind of configuration, kind of bringing it full circle, how do you how do you use that to the best advantage in defensive maneuvers? So when I'm flying defensively, um, and I know. A good pilot's on me, and I know what they're doing. Usually, what I do that the Hornet has an uh, has an um, advantage when strafing up and down, but your uh, your black you will black out. Like that's the only way to black out in a Hornet is by boost strafing up or down because it just goes right. it's fast. When you do that, it's it's like it's completely inverted to flying an Avenger or a Gladius or a 300, for example. And what you do is after you go into that direction, you start going. You space break and flip your direction, you know, where you're going to be aiming, let go of the brake and keep boosting towards your target. And what that'll do is that'll flip your ship in the direction that he's stopping and you'll go straight toward him. And nine times out of 10, he'll be in a position to where he's space breaking to line up a shot on you. Cause after all, you're a clumsy Hornet, right? <laughs> Blast. All right. So uh, what advice would you give a new player? And I also got another question after that. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so for new players, um, the ship you choose is going to matter a lot. So I hate to say this. I mean, I'm not, it's not pay to win by any standards, but when you pledge for this game and you, you want to play it, if you buy an Aurora, you're, you're doing it wrong. Like, that's just bare minimum get the game. If you want to be competitive in Arena Commander... You either have to buy an Avenger, a Gladius, a 325A, or any 300 series, actually, or Hornet. And if you have, and with the Rex store available to you, if you are one of those guys that have an Aurora, you you just want to shoot Vandal until you save up around 20,000 Rex or so. Rent yourself whatever you want, whatever guns you want, and just keep practicing. You have to persevere in arena commander like there are a lot of guys out there like myself that have invested a lot of money into the game have a lot of weapons available to us we don't have to rec anything you know we, we just we own the stuff so you're gonna basically like, an everyday deal right yeah you have to if in order for you to you know continue to maintain that level of play you're gonna have to keep playing to build up wreck every day you know you have to play every day 
to get better. You can't just, you know, say, okay, I'm going to slap CS missiles on my Gladius and GG, I'm MLG Pro. It okay. doesn't work that way. All right. I've got one more question before we hit the rapid fires. And that question is, how do you feel about the, the toggling of the use of boost to swap out for velocity versus acceleration? Ooh, good question. Like I said before, it's completely overpowered. Um, it, it, Wait, it's the, the boost versus uh, he's talking about the the newest uh, the thing that's coming up right in two point oh. Yep. Oh, oh, you're talking 2. about two oh. Yeah, there's yeah, a toggle I, switch that basically allows you allows you to choose between acceleration or velocity, and so I wanted to know what your input on that would be. They'd be able to go. You'd have the choice between having a faster okay, top okay. speed or a faster acceleration, but not both. Well, okay. So here's here's the advantage with that. So. When you're in a, and you're in now, this is where the, the game's going to change for Hornet pilots. If we switch to velocity or boost, that means we'll be able to literally start boosting away in the direction we're sliding faster than a Gladius or an Avenger. They'll have to switch to that mode as well to keep up, and then we'll switch back to the um, acceleration mode and then space break and acceleration mode to quick stop, and that Avenger or Gladius or whatever's flying at you, depending on their skill level, is either going to struggle stopping or flashing yeah, I can, by you. I can, so, I can see that. I think, if anything, that'll add layers to the gameplay because it, it's going to turn into not just a six directions of freedom and your accuracy, but it's also going to come down to do you know the, the mass of your ship, your stopping power, how quickly can you transition from yep. accelerating to trying to go over your top speed to back to accelerating and so on and so forth. It'll be just like driving a car in space. Yes. With it's guns. Gonna, with guns. It's, it's <laughs> going to be great. Yeah. Like, I can't wait because, you know, personally, I own an A86 and I've driven a lot of rear wheel drive cars in my life. So this ex absurd drift on the Hornet, for example, is manageable for me because I, I know how to deal with it in real life. So when I transfer, nice. when I transfer that into the game, um, all I have to do is make sure I'm not strafing in the direction of an asteroid. And if I all am, right. just to, All right, you everybody. Know, so what, yeah. what he's saying is, is, is go buy a hot rod car and, and go learn to be a pro driver, then come back to Star Citizen and rock and roll. Well, that's, <laughs> just, right, that's right. just my analogy, but yeah. I like it. All right, so it's time, it's time for the uh, rapid fires. It's going to be uh, six or seven questions we ask every episode. And we've got them hammered down to these six. And so, uh, you ready for them? Oh, yeah. Let's go. All right, you've already answered this first one, but we'll go ahead and ask it anyway. Key for keyboard and mouse, or HOTAS, and why? Two joysticks, because I personally believe that a HOTAS isn't that viable in Arena Commander, because if you can set your hat or whatever joystick you're using for your throttle up and down, it's the same principle, and it's just a waste of desk space. All right, quick and, yep. quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. What brand of ships? One brand, human only. Why? Um, I would have to go with Aegis. Unfortunately, <laughs> because um, the Gladius flies better than the Hornet, and Aegis just simply has sexier ships. The Gladiator looks like a snowspeeder that's been beefed up. Like, I just, um, the, the, the Anvil lineup, as much as I love the Hornet, the Hornet's great, but the Aegis ships are just okay. much more better designed. Yeah. All right. All right. So the next question is, you can if you had to, if you couldn't mix your loadout, would you go all ballistics or all energy, and which one is preferred? I would go all energy, because if you can't can't mix loadouts, then you want to be able to be sure you fire. You have you don't have to worry about ammo at that point. If you're using ballistics, you have to worry about ammo, and that that's pretty much why I say energy over ballistics at this point. But all right, next from question. A, you ready? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish. Go oh, ahead. from a PvP perspective, you're just going to be straight, strictly dogfighting. Then ballistics all the way. All right. Raw. All right. All right. So yeah. the next question is: What would you want to see for the community in the future? Less toxicity, more pr uh, productivity. You know, the forums are really, they're very hard for you to read because you know, all I see is a bunch of people arguing about stuff they don't know what they're talking about. You know, honestly, I think that you know. If people are going to have an opinion on something, then they actually need to participate in said activity before they post a topic. And that's as far as I'm going to go on that. All right. You ready? Yes. Next question. What changes have you enjoyed the most? Uh, the UI. 
the UI is my favorite thing. Zane has done an amazing job with the UI. <laughs> like uh, it's so it's just so sexy. Like it gets have even you, better. Have you flown better. the uh, Have you flown the glaive? Yes, I have flown the glaive. <sighs> um, All right. Last question. Okay, so UI and anything else? Any other changes? Uh, um, not really. I can I can think of a bunch of changes I don't like, but all right, all right. Let's not go down that path. <laughs> right. All right. So, uh, do you have any questions for us? That's the last question. So, what made you guys decide to do something like this? Um, that's that toxicity that you mentioned before. We were uh -huh. I we all got together and decided to say, hey, let's try and do something positive for the community that highlighted the community members and not just the big names. Right. Um, we wanted to promote Star Citizen, not demote it. And then the um, in certain areas, in certain sections of the community, there was just a whole bunch of negativity and upset individuals that felt jaded and disgruntled. And I said, you know, this is about something that we're supposed to be believing in, not something that we're looking for flaws to criticize. So let's bring our best foot forward and let's try to actually do something good for the group. I... We do this all completely for free. We take the time out of our days to do this. Every uh, member, there's five of us in total, and each and every one of us is just as important as the next. Ion, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, no, um, I came into the project a little bit later, but uh, when I heard about it forming, it was it was ideal. You know, um, the Reddit Player One community was, the community I founded was based around the exact same principles. I wanted a home for people to come where, whether they were talking about, you know, you know, approved or, or official or non-approved and unofficial things, they were they had a home that they could, but the whole idea of community is the fact that it was promoting Star Citizen and moving forward. The the forums as as the RSI forums now are are an open platform. All you have to do is pay your money to be a backer, to be on the forums to comment, and now you have a soapbox. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're there to be constructive and try to forward the game positively. Um, really the only prime principle behind what I do was about being positive. So when when Station Forty Two came online, I, I was like, "This is this is an amazing opportunity. I want to celebrate the community members. I want to celebrate the people yep. who play the game, and I want to give them a voice." Because sometimes, e even even at my investiture level, you know, the RSI forums still leave me feeling like I'm unheard. And I think everybody wants to be able to have a chance to voice about what they're passionate about. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Any other questions? <laughs> no, but I just have one thing I want to add. Um, What's that, man? To all the new players out there and all the people that are, you know, playing the game and, you know, trying to get good at it, you know, like I said, you just, you got to persevere and, and not be intimidated by good pilots like myself and a lot of others out there. Just, you know, you got to have the heart of the tiger. Just stay, yes! just stay strong <laughs> and do your best. You know, if someone knocks you down, get get the Goku attitude. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna knock you down just as hard. Hey, hey, one you question. Know. One question. Is it okay to have the Joe Dirt attitude? Uh, because all the bad stuff can happen to you, but you still get up and keep going. Sure. Yeah. Joe. The Joe Dirt <laughs> stuff works too. Yeah. Just you know, don't give up. You know, if you wanna if you wanna be competitive, if you wanna play the game, if you love it, don't get discouraged from the trolls. Don't get discouraged from all the negative people in this community. Just ignore them and fly your spaceship and be happy. That That's the only advice I can give anyone playing this game. And also, when it comes to controllers, you know, with mouse and keyboard, you're, you're trying to, to aim while flying. With a, with a joystick, you're, you're, you're flying while trying to aim. You know, if that makes sense to you, good. If not, then I really don't know how to put it up some words. It's, it's about preference and how comfortable you are as a player playing the game. Don't let these arguments about mouse versus joystick discourage you or, you know, well, make, you, make you sway your mind about anything. Play the way you like to play. Devamos, thank you for joining us today. And thank you to Ion and everybody else that makes this possible. Thank you, uh, Godric, and thank, thank you, Irv Nation and Player Cause. I just wanted to go ahead and say uh, this is a wrap. Go ahead and cue that outro music, guys. I think we're done here, boys. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. It was a pleasure. Anytime, man. Anytime. Heart of the tiger, the king of the fight. Don't put your day job. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs>
Marksmen's. Because Marksman? it actually takes skill to use. What about the task force? I'm curious about that. What is that like? Um, you mean like the the size one CS? Yeah, just task force. And they fire faster. They block faster. That's pretty much it. Uh, the easier the dodge, the tempest, because a lot of fuel. They don't track as good. You, you look at the thing and you think it would follow you all around the planet. No, 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 no the, the, the gladiator ones do. Size 4. It's <laughs> ridiculous. You see, that's a little ridiculous. You would think that the, uh, the gladiator like torpedoes would be slower to lock, slower to get to the target, and uh, more designed towards, you know, larger ships, you know? That the smaller missiles would be, maybe they don't have the fuel for long range, but they would be more uh, agile and harder to lose. Due to their like lower warhead capability or balance as well. What do you think of the Dominators? I, I find that they work pretty well. Yeah, I really don't mess with Dominators too much. I think it's because All right. they and we're right. off. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, dude! Like and when it, when uh, Godric queued up like five, four, three, two, one, and then it was like silent, and I'm like, uh. Um, well, fuck, fuck, you, fuck, didn't fuck. Hear, you didn't hear you didn't hear the music. Right into the first question, sorry, man. <laughs> well, it's okay. I mean, you can't hear the music, so th yeah, I that's. Know, last time I did, but this time I couldn't. Yeah, that was the, like when I I was like, "Is the music over? Are we starting? What's going on?" No, nah, it's just I figured yeah, the best sorry. thing to do is just go ahead and directly ask. No, Godric, I want them to hear hear us saying we're going live, and that and it okay. cues everybody else up and gets us ready. No, you're cool, man. Sure. It's sure. cool. It's, I thought I'd. So another thing that went wrong oh, on my end, and I'm not exactly sure why, uh, right back, I'm still trying to off. figure that out, is the video <laughs> wasn't streaming. I, I and it's I'm I'm a little baffled, but I mean it's not a big deal uh, since Aaron is going to edit those videos, so this only affects the yeah. live stream. But still, very baffling. I don't know what changed between last week and today. Well, it's kind of like Defamos is saying, telling the new players, we're basically the new kids on the podcast YouTube thing. If we just keep 